Hello everybody, let's get into the problem. I'm Ken Francis, California Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist, and I would like to talk about the ACA literature called The Problem. I work with people who suffer from addiction and trauma. And whether or not they're going to Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, whatever the alphabet soup is that they go to, I always say that all roads will eventually lead them to ACA, Adult Children of Alcoholics. And in ACA, the qualifier isn't whether you drink alcohol, whether you do drugs, the qualifier is if you identify with any of the 14 traits of the laundry list, or maybe you identify with the opposite side of the laundry list. I go back and forth between using the laundry list in my groups and using the ACA problem. The laundry list can get a little bit sticky sometimes. Sometimes people feel overwhelmed with it. And sometimes there's a little bit of redundance because it's 14 traits, but some of the traits are you're either this and that, or this and you do this. So if you really add them up, um, my OCD tells me that there's more than 14. So I prefer to go over the problem. So let's review the ACA literature called The Problem Right Now. These traits are the reactions to abandonment and trauma. Now, this abandonment and trauma could have happened in our early years as a child. It could have happened in our teenage years. And I believe, talking to some of my patients, that sometimes the trauma actually happens in young adulthood. We do know now that the human brain continues to form in your early 20s, and it doesn't kind of solidify and stop forming until you're about 24, 25 years old. So I believe that when we talk about uh, adult children, that sometimes the trauma doesn't necessarily have had to have happened in early childhood. Sometimes it could happen in later teenage or early adult years. If you'd like to read along, the problem can be found in the ACA Big Red Book on page 589. The problem adapted from the laundry list. Many of us found that we had several characteristics in common as a result of being brought up in an alcoholic or dysfunctional household. There doesn't necessarily have to be alcoholism in the household, and a lot of times we don't really understand what dysfunctional households are because what our normal is is our normal. So we might not necessarily recognize dysfunction from the beginning. We might recognize the traits that I'm going to talk about, but we don't always recognize the dysfunction. And sometimes I like to ask people to look at dysfunction in terms of stress. Was there a lot of stress and tension in the house growing up because sometimes that is easier to identify than dysfunction or trauma. We had come to feel isolated and uneasy with other people, especially authority figures. When we're kids, we're kind of at the, the beck and call of people that are older than us, that are bigger than us. Oftentimes we're told to respect your elders, and if the authority figures in our life do not treat us with respect, kindness, if they are not there for us emotionally, maybe they've just, they're just not there. They are off working, they're busy doing other things, or maybe they're there but they're passed out on the couch or too busy watching the television. Either way, they are our authority figures and sometimes we feel really isolated with other authority figures as we get up because it's part of our programming. To protect ourselves, we became people pleasers, even though we lost our own identities in the process. Because I just want you to be happy. I cannot feel at peace. I cannot feel happy until you're happy and you're happy and you're happy. So many of you can relate to being people pleasers. And all the same, we would mistake any personal criticism as a threat. What? You, you, you're saying I look good today. What is it? What is it that you want from me? You know, we take any criticism, whether it's positive or negative, as a threat. It just doesn't feel comfortable because we're so used to having our guard up, having our walls up, not trusting other people. We either became alcoholics or practiced other addictive behaviors ourselves, or married them, or both 
And with the people that I work with, this is kind of a given. Failing that, we found other compulsive personalities, such as a workaholic, to fulfill our sick need for abandonment. We go with what's familiar, and if we had a parent that wasn't there for us and we felt abandoned, oftentimes we seek out other people who will give us the same feelings. And it's subconscious, we don't want to do this, but we do it because it's familiar. We seek out what's familiar. These are patterns that we have over and over again, and why people relate to this, because it's their pattern. We live life from the standpoint of victims. This means that you're looking at life and it's always, why me? Why does everything happen to me? Why do I never get the breaks? Why do I always get passed over? Why don't I have any friends? Why me? Why me? Why me? And as kids, it's really, really hurtful when we don't understand what's happening to us. But as we get older, we keep ourselves stuck in that why me victim standpoint. Having an overdeveloped sense of responsibility, we preferred to be concerned with others rather than ourselves. This goes back to the fear of abandonment and being a people pleaser. If I become the hero, if I become super, super responsible, then I can take care of everyone else. And by taking care of everyone else, guess what? I don't have to look into myself. It's all about you, it's not about me. And then I don't get better. We got guilt feelings when we stood up for ourselves rather than giving in to others. How many people here can't say no? At any cost, they can't say no. And when they do, the guilt is just too overwhelming. Thus, we become reactors rather than actors, letting others take the initiative. We become very passive. We go through life and we're the pinball bouncing off of everything, but we're never actually steering our own ship and taking our own direction. We were dependent personalities, terrified of abandonment, willing to do almost anything to hold on to a relationship in order to not be abandoned emotionally. Adult children are extremely loyal even to people who don't deserve the loyalty because there's such a fear of going back and feeling that same pain that we felt as children that we hoped we would never ever have to feel again. Yet we kept choosing insecure relationships because they matched our childhood relationship with alcoholic or dysfunctional parents. Many of us just have this desire to want to fix things, to fix people. We couldn't fix our parents, so we try to find someone else. So we look for these sick relationships, not on purpose, but we're looking for a project. We might think we're looking for a partner, but really we're looking for a project. We want to try to fix someone because we were not able to fix our parents growing up. These symptoms of the family disease of alcoholism or other dysfunction made us co-victims, those who take on the characteristics of the disease without necessarily ever taking a drink. Some people tend to steer completely away from alcohol if that's what they saw their parents do, but then maybe they become buried with work or with marijuana or something else. They just switch the substance but they don't switch the behavior. We learn to keep our feelings down as children and keep them buried as adults. Let's play it safe. Let's not feel. Don't talk, don't feel, don't trust. Let's play it safe. And as a result of this conditioning, we confused love with pity, tending to love those we could rescue, hence looking for the project. Even more self-defeating, we became addicted to excitement in all our affairs, preferring constant upset to workable relationships. Meaning we don't know how to manage life when things are calm and smooth. We only know how to deal with times when it's stressful. And when that stress is gone, it's almost like we're naked. We don't know how to function, so we look for stress. We create the drama, we stir the pot. We look for the burning buildings to jump into because we just can't find serenity in peace. We need that excitement. And if you can identify with that, 
then you can identify with trait number eight of the laundry list. And in the end, this is a description, not an indictment. You might not relate to everything in the laundry list or the problem, but if you identify with some, or if you flipped it, in other words, instead of being afraid of authority figures, you become the bully. You become the person who will not let anybody get anything over on you. And that happens sometimes. We, 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 we flip this. If you can identify with any of these, then I would strongly suggest checking out an ACA meeting. And I really believe the goal of the ACA is making this list, these traits, obsolete. So if you did identify with anything on the problem or the laundry list, that someday when you read it, you say to yourself, I used to do that. That used to be me, but I don't need to do that any longer. That's the goal. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I appreciate the thumbs up and the support that everyone's been giving the channel. So as always, thank you for watching.